morning, good morning. It's Sunday, which means it's Sunday fun day. My husband loves a Sunday brunch. He's obsessed with the Sunday. Hi, funky noodles. Oh, you got your Christmas pajamas on. You gonna do a dance, dance a dance, dance a Christmas pajamas on. Oh, you hiding? Where'd Flynn go? Flynn? Where's Flynn? Flynn? Oh, there he is! Whoa! Oh, where's, where's Flynn? Where'd he go, Flynn? Where's Flynn? Where's Flynn? Oh, there he is! Oh, I hope he doesn't fall asleep. Oh, no. Oh, he's not. Oh, are you going to sleep? Oh, my bad. So because my husband's obsessed with Sundays, he's obsessed with the idea of a Sunday brunch. It's funny because I grew up going to church, so I grew up like knowing that a Sunday was like a day of holiness and it was like a day, but we never did like Sunday brunch or anything. Like sometimes we pick up some donuts on the way home from church if they're on sale, but like that was kind of it. But usually the church had free donuts after service. Anyway, the point is, I've never known anyone who's like obsessed with a Sunday the way my husband is obsessed with Sundays. And for no reason, he's just like, likes it. So if he has a busy day on a Sunday, he'll be like, I didn't even get a Sunday. So we make sure to have a Sunday here. So I made breakfast burritos. Oh my God, so breakfast burritos. It's time for Advent. Bang, 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 bang. It's this one. Oh. It's a Kukla truck! Whoa. I think it's like a sewage tr truck type thing, but he calls those poo-poo trucks. <laughs> the poo-poo truck. All right, it's Mama's turn, so you get to put these. Say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, aren't those fun? Time for the advent of kindness. Mission for today is tell someone that you love them. I love you. I love you. I love you, love you. Love you too. Dun, dun. Dum, dum, dum. <gasps> oh. oh! It's like a sun catcher present. Pretty nice. All right, guys, and I have a bonus because I have a 12 Days of Christmas lipsticks. Yeah. Get it, lipstick. So I did yesterday's, and I think I'm doing it wrong because I think you're supposed to do one, two, three, four, but I'm going backwards because it's like the 12 days of Christmas, so it's like you want to do 12 days till Christmas, 11 days, and now it's 12 days of Christmas, 12 days until. It's definitely wrong if it's in order like that. Right. Like so, I don't really get how it's supposed to. It's supposed to be probably one, two, three. Yeah. I would say that's pretty clear. Okay, but that's not doesn't make any sense to me. Then you go like on the uh, in. Uh, today I'll do this, but it's not two days until Christmas. That's not how you do the new guinea on it. The other one makes more sense because it's like December 1st is one, December 2nd is two. Yeah, but just look at it like you read a book, but you don't read books backwards. Just saying, it doesn't make sense to open one, two, three. Yeah, it does go a song on the first But that's so good much math. Okay, well then, you know what? You guys are just haterades, and I'll do it the other way. I'm opening one. Cause today's the day I'm supposed to start it. Even though that makes no sense. So welcome to me having the only one with a brain that makes sense and everyone else is wrong in the whole world. I'm doing me now because I've been peer pressured to be you. So everyone in the world is wrong except for me, but here we go. I'm doing what? It's too late, you ruined it. Today I got a butter gloss. Ooh, this is pretty. Can you guess the name? Oh, this is gonna be fun. What do you think this is named? This is what it looks like. Rose Garden. A moist raspberry. Corey's guessing moist raspberry. Street light. Burt Sienna. Flynn, what do you think this is called? What is this? Kook. A kook? <laughs> he said kook. It is, and it actually, he was the closest because it's angel food cake, <gasps> and he said kook. So let's try it on. What about street light? People. Ooh, this is so my jam. I love this. I'm so glad you guys peer pressured me to open one because I like this one a lot. Wait, does it smell like angel food cake? That's Advent. I just got my vlog up for the day and the sun is going down because the sun goes down so early now. It's so weird. It's 4.30. Like, why is the sun going away? Uh, we watched Elf today. There was a table read of Elf with like a lot of the original cast and I love that movie. It's my favorite Christmas movie. Really can't stay. Uh, 
we got to watch that and it was to raise money for the Democrats in Georgia because there's an important election coming up. Um, it was really cool. It was awesome to watch. Then I have felt nauseous most of the day. I'm not pregnant. Don't even try it. I don't know why. I think I ate something weird this morning or something. I don't know, but I felt nauseous. I swear to God, I'm not pregnant. Now we're gonna go look at some Christmas lights, I think. So we're gonna go meet up with Uncle Coco and find some Christmas lights and look at the, because Flynn loved those Christmas arches when we saw them. We went to take a picture there. And so we wanna take him back. And there's also tons of really cool, just generic Christmas lights over there. So we're gonna go take a look. Do you wanna go in the Dar Dar and go see the lights? Cool jacket. Cool jacket, yeah. Cool jacket. Dad has a cool jacket. We're gonna go check out the lights. <laughs> Peekaboo, you ready? <gasps> oh, Peekaboo! Go! <laughs> Flynn, are you taking a break from the lights to dig up some rocks? He just abruptly stopped running through all these awesome lights because he saw tiny rocks and he needs to, of course, uh, dig them up with his excavator. Oh, it's a bulldozer. Yeah, you're digging the rocks. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Ready? Go, 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 go. go. He's so fast. Super fun, Flynn loved it. We took him last year to see Christmas lights and he was obviously only one and didn't really care. So it was exciting to see him care this year. Yeah, it was fun and he knows who Santa is now because we explained who Santa was and I was like, oh, he doesn't know what Santa is. And so we explained what Santa was today and then when we were driving through, like every house had like a different kind of like Santa statue or something and he started being like, Santa, Santa. So he doesn't know what Santa does but he knows Santa exists and he knows what he looks like. Very exciting. My sister's here. We just filmed a mukbang, as you can see by all the vegan food everywhere. And so there's Rachel and we just ate food. And Flynn just dumped crayons on the floor. Good boy picking them up. Good cleaning. My plan is to get that up tomorrow, but I don't know if I have time to edit it tonight. So we'll see. If it's up, go check it out. If it's not, I'm sorry. See you tomorrow. Check it out some other time. So that's- It was pretty juicy. <laughs> it was juicy. We gave like, we spilled the tea and told the truth about some things we've never been honest about before. So go check it out. The truth about me. <laughs> doing this for like 20, 30 minutes, just Rock it. go. <laughs> just going and running around. <laughs> Whoa, that was fast. I sit back up, he does it for us. Ready, go. Rock it. <laughs> Daisy's gonna race you. Race, race to Daisy. Daisy. On your set.
Hello everybody. So um, I just asked on Twitter what you guys would want me to tell stories about if I were to do a story time at the end of my video. Cause sometimes I get in my office and I have stuff I need to talk about. Like I've had a rough day or I'm like thinking about something a lot or I need to clarify something or whatever. But today I was like, I kind of just like feel like in the mood to tell a story. I think it's cause I filmed a mukbang with my sister tonight and it was fun to like remember like so many different fun stories from like touring with her while we were doing the mukbang. But I was surprised when I asked what I should tell a story about, I thought on Twitter everyone would say totally different things, but it was overwhelming how many people said college stories, which is so funny to me. I have a million. So like so many came into my head when I read that, like you guys wanted college stories. So I'm just gonna, I don't know which one to tell you. I feel like I have one in my mind, but I'm like, it's a good one. So I'm like, should I save it or should I just tell it? Flynn woke up right as I started telling the story. So I'm gonna try to make this quick. Okay, so in college, there was this guy that like, I didn't have like a serious relationship until after college ever in my whole life. I didn't have a boyfriend in high school and in college I had like boyfriends, but they weren't like boyfriends. They were like boys that I was really good friends with and we were like super close and then we would like kind of start dating sort of, but then not really. And that was kind of like what I had. This is one of those stories. So there's this guy who's like my best friend and it was my first like relationship or whatever you want to call it in college. And he was my best, best, best friend. And we were mostly just best friends. Friends. And then eventually it turned into more and we were kind of dating but like I was kind of scared of commitment and he didn't know what to do But he really liked me and it was like our entire friendship Everyone was like, oh my gosh, he has such a big crush on you. Oh my gosh, he likes you so much I like knew he did but like I really like being friends with him So I didn't want to not be friends with him But I also wasn't ready to like date anyone because I was like scared of it And he wasn't like hitting on me or like flirting with me in any kind of way It was just kind of like we were best friends, but like I knew he wanted to be more so eventually we became more but it took a long time before I got to that point. But I finally got to the point where I was like, yes, okay, let's be more than friends and let's see how that goes. And I was trying to like be vulnerable and like accept and open up to the idea of like being in a relationship. I'm skipping over a lot and there are so many stories I could tell you from college, but I'm trying to get to the punchline of this one because it's insane. And I really hope he never sees this. I don't think he will. I have not spoken to this person since like the beginning of college and I don't even know anything. I know nothing about him now, so I don't know what he's doing with his life, but I hope he's happy and flourishing and living his best life. He's a very, very, very kind, nice guy, like really sweet. So I hope he's doing well. So it was my birthday and he said he had been working on a present for me all week and he was like so excited excited to give it to me and we had really started to like get in the thick of it of like being in a relationship. So for my birthday, I keep on telling this story. I don't think I've told this story online before, but maybe I have. So for my birthday, he like takes me to this like special spot on campus. He's like, okay, so your present isn't something you can unwrap. It's something on my laptop. Oh no, my battery's gonna die. So hopefully I can get through this whole story. So he opens up his laptop and he pushes play. It's a song. <laughs> You think I would be like, oh my god, he wrote me a song like how romantic. And that is, that is how I felt. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe he wrote me a song. Like, this is so amazing. Like, this is so cute. He like wrote me a song. It's like about how amazing I am. Before he gave me the gift, he told me something before he showed me the song, he he implied that he had or told me he had been like praying a lot about our relationship. He was very religious, very, very, very religious. And like God had pushed him in the direction of like writing this song. I'm so stressed about my battery dying. My anxiety is like through the roof. So I'm gonna switch my battery before I finish the stories so that I don't like ruin the story. Okay, hold on. So fresh battery. Let's get this party started. So he's this song is playing and like he told me that he'd worked on it all week and like we started on the lyrics and recording the music and all this stuff. The song's playing and at first I think it's so sweet and then I start to realize like he's talking in past tense. This sounds like he's talking to someone who's dead. So the lyrics were like, we talked, we laughed, we cried, we sang, I'll never forget you, like things like that. And I was like, why is he talking about me like I'm a like I'm not alive anymore. This is my birthday, by the way. This is my birthday present from my like boyfriend, like boyfriend, whatever we were. And then is the chorus and I'm gonna sing it for you. <laughs> I hope he never sees this. Oh God, I hope he never sees this. Okay. <clears throat> you were the best friend I ever had. You were the smile inside my heart. You made me laugh when I was sad. You held my hands when times were dark. You were the smile on my face. I was happy each day. And though God had a different plan, I wanna thank you, Cole, Lean me for being my best friend. So I hear this lyric and I go, I want to thank you for being my best friend. 
everything's in past tense. Oh my God, he's breaking up with me through a song on my birthday. So he, the song finishes and I'm just like, sitting there like, what's going on? Mind you, we get to this location, like this cute little location he takes me to him for my birthday. He kisses me, we're holding hands, like acting like nothing is wrong. And then he starts playing this song for me about how we're breaking up. Now, mind you, I wasn't even like, I think I just said mind you like eight times, but I wasn't even like that upset because it wasn't like a really a relationship. It was more like friendship and just like testing out, you know, is this what a relationship is? I didn't know anything about relationships and I didn't know how to be in one. And I, it's not like I was sad that it was ending. I was was like confused as to why he thought this was a really good idea to give me for my birthday like a song that basically sounded like a song that I was dead and it was him telling me that he didn't want to be my boyfriend anymore or my best friend like he didn't want to be anything like he was saying thank you for being my best friend like peace I can't do this it was so weird because the song was like saying thank you for being my friend but like I don't want to be with you anymore like even though we're best friends and now more like we're done part of me is like proud of him because now looking back as a grown woman who's like more mature in relationships I'm like well good for him for recognizing like this isn't like healthy because we're not like official official it was like we were friends and I liked her for so long and now we're dating and it doesn't feel quite right and like I don't know that this is a right thing so like I think I got to get out of this and I don't think we can just be friends I think like we need to cut off completely like props to him for recognizing that and realizing that even though that's not what he did afterwards props for that but like still the, the execution of this realization for him was not appropriate to give a girl a song that you wrote hype it up like it's this love song and then her realize like oh my god this is a breakup song but not just a breakup song like my best friend is also saying he doesn't want to be my friend anymore for my birthday like this is my birthday gift and then he gave me the lyrics to the song like handed me the written lyrics which I have somewhere in some notebook or diary but I, I don't know where they are but anyway so that is an interesting little story from my college days but I have a Billion. Like I have so many weird college stories because I went to a very religious school. I have a lot of interesting stories from my experiences there. And one is things like that where people would use God or religion as an excuse. So instead of being like, um, hey, this is not right. I'm not feeling this. Or hey, I don't think that this is healthy for me or whatever. He's like, God told me to do this. And God told me to write this song for you. Now I'm not saying or discrediting anyone who feels like God has told them to do or say things in their life. I think that's wonderful and that's so cool. But I also think taking responsibility for big things in your life, whether they're negative or positive, is really important to grow as a human being. You can't just blame everything on God or Satan. Like I think it's important to take responsibility and have reflection and understand why you're doing the things you're doing in life. And a lot of times in college, at my college, um, in a lot of the relationships, not just mine, people were broken up with, hearts shattered, and their excuse was well God told me to do it or they would do something really evil and mean in a relationship and be like well Satan made me do it instead of being like hey I made a really really bad decision and I suck or hey this isn't working for me and I think you know this is what you can say like this is what I think God wants for us and but I also like after doing a lot of reflection and, and learning like I think this is what's best for us and I you know what I mean like, did you get what I'm saying like I'm not discrediting people who like get things or hear things or talk to God or whatever I'm not discrediting that I'm just saying like I don't like when people blame things on that and that was a, a, an example of that like that happened all the time so if you guys want to hear more stories from my college days let me know because I have a lot I told this story before but like I had a sip of alcohol once and I had to go to alcohol awareness classes and I, I was on alcohol probation or I was on probation for a year and I had to get an alcohol like mentor for a year to help me with my alcoholism even though I literally had one sip of champagne and to this day like do not drink like I drink like a sip or two of something a year and that's basically it and I've always kind of been that way I experienced like weird like ghosts like demon -y type stuff there crazy roommate stories because I always had roommates and then after college I have stories of like guys I like would go on a date with crazy stories like I have like oh my gosh I have so many weird stories guys I have so many I have, like a guy tried to make me a Mormon which no shade to people who are Mormon but like I was very upfront being like I will I, that's not my jam like I'm not gonna be into that and he like aggressively tried to make me become a Mormon and then was like super homophobic and really rude to me and that's not a reflection of what Mormon 
Mormons are like, I think Mormons are very sweet, but my experience with that one person was like really weird. I've done shows where like men were extremely inappropriate and holy smokes, like I have crazy stories from shows that I've done and directors I've worked with. I just feel like I have a billion weird, crazy stories from like high school, college, after college, like so many weird stories and like just stories from like the beginning of my career, I feel like was so crazy. And I feel like I have a thousand stories from that, like stories that like I'll tell Eric or even like my brother and they'll be like, what? That happened? I was very much just like, a, yeah, sure, I'll do that with everything in my life at the beginning of my career. So I traveled everywhere alone, got in some really shady situations that I definitely was so stupid and should not have gotten into. Not anything like bad, but just like people would be like, hey, you can stay with me. And I'd be like, okay. And I'd just stay with strangers and I would fly to places without having hotels, not knowing anything about the city, completely alone. Like I did stuff like that all the time. I would message just random. I would like search a city. I'd be like, um, I'm gonna try. Like I'd get a few comments be like, come to Salt Lake City, Utah. And I'd be like, Okay, so then I'd search Salt Lake City, Utah Comedy Club and would like email the managers there and be like, can I do a show at your club? And just email people in every city where I got comments saying that like there are fans there. And I would like try to book myself and like I would borrow money from everyone trying to like just get to certain places. I mean, I have had the craziest. I've stayed in like sketchy, sketchy places. I literally one time didn't have a place to stay when I was in London. I was out of money. I had nowhere to stay. And like someone on Facebook was like, you can stay with this girl. I was like, you can stay with me in my dorm. And I was like, okay, went and stayed with that girl in her dorm for a night. I've never spoken to her again. I don't even, I couldn't even find her if I tried like on Facebook, like, but she was just, she was really nice and she offered a place. I literally was homeless that night. I had nowhere to stay. Like I've done some crazy stuff. And I feel like for some of these nights where I don't have much to talk about, but like I'm feeling chatty, I feel like it might be fun to do that. So tell me in the comments below if any of the stories I just mentioned spark your interest in which one you'd want to hear the most maybe i'll start doing like little story times if this interests you but if not whatever anyway i hope you enjoyed that little song i hope that guy never knows that i did that because i would never want to embarrass him because he was really really nice and i think he did think that was a nice thing to do for me and it just was like not anyway i want to go to bed i love you guys see you tomorrow Bye.